Welcome back, warrior kids. I'm so happy that you all came back. My name is Pam Palmiter, and I am the host of the Warrior Kids podcast, which is taped before our famous live studio audience. Today is a really exciting day for my eldest son, Mitchell. You know why? Well, I'm going to tell you in the Mi'kmaq language. Achibunat. That means it is his birthday. Do you want to try saying it? A chi bu nat. It is his birthday. A chi bu nat. Happy birthday, Mitchell, and a very happy birthday to all the kids out there who also celebrate their birthdays on May the 6th. I am also super, doubly, extra, mega, totally excited for today's show. You know why? Well, maybe I should make you all guess. Okay, okay, Cricket. I'll tell them. One of my really awesome friends is with us today, and she's going to share some important knowledge about First Nation kids. Did you notice that I didn't say Indigenous kids? I said First Nation kids. Can any of you remember what the difference is? In our last episode on Indigenous identity, we covered some of the words used to describe Native peoples. The word Indigenous refers to all Native peoples generally, which includes First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. But the word First Nation refers specifically, or only to, First Nations. Those are native peoples who are the original peoples of Turtle Island who have lived in their nations with their own laws and governments for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Today, the word First Nation can refer to the nation itself, like the Mi'kmaq nation that I'm from, or it can refer to all the smaller communities within that larger First Nation. These smaller First Nation communities are also sometimes called bands or reserves, like my home community of Eel River Bar First Nation. But don't worry if the words are still a bit confusing. We'll talk more about Indigenous identity in future podcasts as well. But let's get back to my friend who has joined us on our Warrior Kids podcast. We actually get to talk to Dr. Cindy Blackstock. Cindy is one of my most favorite people in the whole world. And no, it's not just because she knows how to bake really good cookies, although that's a huge bonus. I like Cindy because she's a grown-up warrior who works hard to stand up for the rights of First Nation kids, especially those kids that live in foster care or away from their families. She's from the Gitsan Nation, which is all the way over in B.C., Unless you're already in BC, then it's not all the way over. Welcome to the Warrior Kids podcast, Cindy. Thank you. It's great to be here, Pam. I'm really excited. Yeah, me too. We're super excited to have you here. I'm wondering if you can introduce yourself. Oh, sure. So, uh, like you said, my name is Cindy, and I grew up in the bush in northern BC, actually, um, right around my nation. We go visit there every once in a while. And um, as a grown up, I've been working with kids and learning from kids about how it is so important that everyone is treated fairly. And do you know, Pam, that the government gives First Nations kids less money for things like education and doctors and nurses? And you know, when families go through a hard time, sometimes they need support. Well, they get less of that, too. And we didn't think that was fair. So I hired a bear, and his name is Spirit Bear, right there. A bear, bear, an actual bear? An actual bear, (laughs) and uh, he's kind of like a lawyer, but another word for lawyer is barrister. And we decided we'd try to get the government to make sure that they treated First Nations children fairly. And it was a tough case, and so we had to go to court and everything. But Spirit Bear, even though he didn't know everything, he always reached out for his ancestors. Here's his ancestor here, Dino. Oh my goodness, it's a dinosaur. Yeah, you know what? We don't always think of them as ancestors, but they passed down teachings to the bears. And we were there with all Dino and Spirit Bear and lots of other friends too. 
and lots of kids. And finally, the people in the court, and those are people who can make decisions about important stuff, said to the government, you know what, you got to treat First Nations children fairly. So we've been working with communities and with kids and with other bears to try and get fairness for kids. Cindy, I don't know if I understand. Why would First Nation kids be treated differently than other kids in Canada? That doesn't sound very fair. It isn't very fair. And this goes way back to when Canada was born as a country. When it was made a country, the government of Canada really didn't treat First Nations people very well. And they thought they weren't worth the same amount of money as other people. And that just kept on happening and happening. And even though people over the years said, well, this isn't right. This child deserves an education. They should be able to speak their language like Cree or Haudenosaunee or Gitsan. But the government never listened properly. So that's why Spirit Bear had to go to court to try and get the government to stop. And there's still more work to do, but we've made some progress. So what are you and Spirit Bear doing to help all of these First Nation kids in care and all First Nation kids, really? I know you've gone to court, but are there other things you and Spirit Bear are doing to help? Yeah, you know what we've been doing is we realize that kids really can change the world. So we've been working with children of all diversities all across Canada. Just the different types of things we'll do to kind of get them to write letters to the government because the government is the group that can make decisions about how much money you get for education and health care. So we ask them to write and just say First Nations kids should be treated fairly and get a proper school and have clean water to drink. And thousands and thousands of kids have written those letters. And sometimes they come in person when it's safe. Right now it's COVID, so you'd have to send a video. You can do all these things so that your voice counts as a child. And that has really, really made a huge, huge difference for First Nations children and their families. So in this situation, it's actually kids helping kids. It is. And you know what is so crazy is sometimes I think adults get used to stuff that they shouldn't get used to. Like I think a lot of adults, they saw the unfairness, but it had been going on so long, it didn't feel like an emergency to them. But when kids saw it and they said, hold on a minute, that child's getting less because they're First Nations? That's not right. So they saw it clearly and then they wanted to help. And they helped in all kinds of wonderful ways. And they continue to help in all kinds of wonderful ways. That's great. And I know sometimes it can seem really sad or even make you angry when these bad things happen or when things are unfair. But are things getting a little bit better and a little bit better with everything that these kids are doing? Yeah. And you know, one place where it really gets better is there's a little boy named Jordan River Anderson from Norway House Cree Nation. And it starts off to be a bit of a sad story. See, Jordan had to stay in the hospital for over two and a half years just because the government didn't want to give him the same kind of health care because he was First Nations as other kids got. And then he sadly passed away in the hospital. So he never was able to go and live in a family home. So that's a sad story. But the good thing is the family got together and said, we want to make sure this doesn't happen to other kids. So they created Jordan's Principle which basically says when First Nations children need help, they should get it. And it shouldn't get less because they're First Nations. And actually, I got a special treat for you here. It was so important to the family that we created Jordan's principal and name of Jordan. And just to show you, this is Jordan's baby blanket. And you can see here that his name it says Jordan River Anderson, born on October 22nd, 1999. Yeah, and I'm going to show you something else. This was his favorite toy. It's a teddy bear reading a book with a whole bunch of other teddy bears. Yeah, you know, teddy bears are really important. So in honor of Jordan River Anderson, we've been able to get over 250,000, that's a whole pile of stuff, of services and help for First Nations kids thanks to Jordan's principal. And so our way of saying thank you to Jordan is by asking kids of all ages, you can get older kids to do it, younger kids, or even your grand nana or your kokum to do it. You get yourself a teddy bear. Doesn't matter what size, you can have more than one. And on the 10th of May, we have something called Bear Witness Day. And that's because teddy bears were Jordan's favorite toy. So we show everybody the toy to honor Jordan. 
And then if you go on to his website, which you can have on the link on your podcast, yeah. you can see a video by kids explaining what Jordan's principle is all about. So you can spread the word about Jordan's principle. But kids have been writing uh, letters and uh, drawing pictures of bears and sending them to politicians and saying, hey, you folks in the government, remember Jordan's principle. And they were a big part of why so many kids are getting help today. So on Bear Witness Day, which is in four days from now, because today is May 6th, warrior kids from all backgrounds all over Canada can grab a teddy bear and help participate in Bear Witness Day, which will actually help pressure the government to do what's right for First Nation kids. Yeah, because what you can do is if you have a phone at home or something, you take a picture of your teddy bear, mm -hmm. and then you get your, a grown-up to send that to the person in the government who works where you live and say, support Jordan's principle. And you could even draw your own card about why you think it's important to treat kids fairly and for them to have proper schools, help for their families when they're going through a hard time, and to get things like clean water to drink. Well, that sounds like something that all Warrior Kids should be able to do. And I will post a link in the Warrior Kids podcast and on my website where they and their parents or teachers can go and to figure out how to do that. Cindy, you are really, really busy trying to help all of these kids win fairness in court. But before you have to go, I'm wondering, do you have any other resources that you can share with us to help get warrior kids involved in standing up for First Nation kids? Yeah, there's a big book called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That's a lot of words. I just call it the TRC because that's easier to remember. And it had all kinds of stuff that we can all do to fix some of the problems that are still happening for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people and to make the world better for all of us. And so what we did is we have a kid's version of all of those things we can all do to help. And you can see Spirit Bears on the cover there. You can go on our website and download this. And it has things everybody can do. And one of the things that we can do is it's coming up the anniversary of when the TRC book was put out. And so we have something called Honoring Memories, Planting Dreams. Do you see Spirit Bear? Oh, well, Spirit Bear gets to do the funnest thing. He does. So what we do is some of the children would have learned about residential schools. And that mm -hmm. was a time when First Nations, Métis and Inuit kids were taken from their families because the government wanted to raise them to be something else other than what they were. And the government didn't understand that First Nations, Métis, and Inuit kids were special just the way they were. No, it went on for a long time. So the kids that went to those schools felt a lot of sadness, and so did their families. So what we do is we plant gardens to honor them and remember them. And the art of planting is kind of like our commitment to say, hey, you know what? We remember what you went through, and we're, we feel badly about it. But more importantly... We're going to work on your stuff so that you make sure that this doesn't happen again and we can all live in a good and fair world. So kids can do that in their potted plant or maybe you have a little bit of a yard. And you can even make your garden in the shape of a heart. If you've got a little bit of a land outside, maybe a grown-up could help you kind of cut out a heart shape and then you could put your flowers in there. And the other thing you can do on those kinds of days is even cut out a paper heart. Say if you lived in an apartment building, you could cut out a paper heart and then write words about kids being healthy and happy and then put them up in your window or in your bedroom. And that's a way of being a part of Honoring Memories Planting Dreams too. Cindy, thank you so much for sharing all of these ideas because sometimes I get really sad about all the things that have happened in the past and some of the unfairness that happens today. But I don't want to just be sad about it. I want to do something about it. And you've given us and all these warrior kids something to do about it. And I think that's going to make me feel a lot better. Yeah, and I want all the kids to understand, just like you say, Pam, that every kid is a warrior kid. Every mm -hmm. child matters. Every child can do something to make the world a better place. And if you go on to follow Spirit Bear at Spirit Bear on Twitter, just about every day or so, he comes up with another idea, and it's free, about how we can all help with reconciliation. And he's also got a website. He's even got his own webpage. Well, this is the most famous bear that I know who's doing nothing but good work. And I'm, I'm so glad you came here today, and not just because you make good cookies, 
but also because you do good work and shared with us what Spirit Bear is doing and all the bears from all the kids all over the country. So I think it's important to lift up all of these kids as warrior kids so they can help make the world a better place. I know they can because I've seen it happen and so has Spirit Bear. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'll share all of these resources to make sure that all of the kids can use them. Thank you so much for being here. I know I learned a lot today, and we are going to put that knowledge into action. Bye, Cindy. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Wasn't Cindy great? I just love talking to her. She always gives me really great ideas on how we can all take action to help other people. There's so much to learn from people who come from all different First Nations and all different backgrounds. We learned that sometimes some kids are not treated fairly just because they are First Nation kids, and that's not right. We also learned that even governments can act unfairly sometimes, but kids have the power to help governments make better choices if we stand up and take action. So it kind of sounds to me like warrior kids are an important part of helping other kids. Let's use what we learned today from Cindy to take some action. So what are you going to do to help governments treat First Nations children more fairly? Will you plant a flower in your backyard? Will you cut out a heart with special messages to stick on your window? Will you follow Spirit Bear on Facebook or Twitter and find other great ideas? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a picture of me with one of my teddy bears and participate with Cindy and Spirit Bear on Bear Witness Day in four days. That's right, it's on May the 10th. And I hope that some of you do too. Thank you all for listening. And I hope that you remember to send me your artwork and stories about how you're being a warrior kid. That way, I can start decorating our warrior kids website. It's looking a little bare at the moment. Don't forget our website address is www.warriorkidspodcast.com. Till next time, later gators.